one of the great commanders of World War II was a dour, gruff, stubborn 58-year-old brain box who went by the nickname Stuffy. Now, it's no exaggeration to say that for a time at least, the fate of his country rested in his hands, or, more precisely, his considerable brain. Step forward, Air Chief Marshal Sir Hugh Dowding, the man who helped to guide his country to victory in one of the most crucial clashes in the history of warfare. The Battle of Britain fought across the bright summer and mellow autumn of 1940. Hello, my name is David and welcome to another D&D History Hub presentation. In this video, I want to take a look at Dowding's style of command and to do that, I'll be holding him up against the art of generalship as laid down by another great British commander, Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery. And it's from uh, Monty's uh, biography here, and it's called, uh, the chapter is called My Doctrine of Command. This is where I've taken some of these guidelines from. Now, in popular memory, the Battle of Britain is a shimmering blue tapestry of diving, banking, looping spitfires and hurricanes in pursuit of their German foes in ME-109s, 110s, Junkers, Dorniers and Heinkels. The grim terror of war juxtaposed with the beauty of a summer sky and the sleek elegance of pirouetting planes. But it was a grim and bitter fight, made all the more intense by the new technologies such as radar, that underpinned Britain's fight for survival against the Nazi Blitz. Appointed in 1936, Dowding was Commander-in-Chief of Fighter Command during the Battle of Britain. He was a trained pilot himself, having served with the Royal Flying Corps, the precursor of the RAF, during the First World War. As a commander, he excelled both strategically and tactically, although Unsurprisingly, he was often at odds with other senior officers and politicians over how the air war should be fought. Uh, this should not be a surprise. This battle or series of battles owed much to recent developments in science and technology. It was complicated. Before the war, Downing had thrown his support behind the development of the Spitfire and Hurricane fighters and also radar and radar stations, and this was all cutting-edge aircraft and technology at the time. In 1940, the eponymous Dowding system of identification and monitoring of enemy aircraft, run out of uh, RAF Bentley Priory, was instrumental in the RAF's victory in the Battle of Britain. Controversially, Dowding resisted pressure to throw all of his fighter planes into the battle in the south of England. He insisted on keeping several squadrons of aircraft in readiness in the north of England. This was vindicated on August 15th, 1940, when around 100 German bombers and fighter escorts targeted Tyneside. At the same time, the Germans sent hundreds of aircraft to attack in the south of England, imagining that was where all the area fighters were gathered. The German attack on the north was thoroughly defeated. The Prime Minister Winston Churchill, in Volume 2 of the Second World War, praised Dowding for his foresight. We must regard the generalship here shown as an example of genius in the art of war, he wrote. Never again was a daylight raid attempted outside the range of the highest class fighter protection. Henceforth, everything north of the River Wash was safe by day. I provide a reference in the description to this uh, video below. After the battle was more or less done, Dowding moved to the uh, Ministry of Aircraft Production, eventually retiring in July 1942. Now, another of Britain's great leaders of World War II was Field Marshal Montgomery, as I mentioned earlier. In his memoirs, Monty describes what he believes to be the essential attributes for anyone 
in high command. I'm going to read some of it to you now. I'd be interested in what you think, how it relates to doubting. So, says Monty, above all, they must have that moral courage, that resolution, and that determination which enables them to stand firm when the issue hangs in the balance. The general has got to strive to read the mind of his opponent, to anticipate enemy reactions to his moves, and to take quick steps to present enemy interference with his own plans. A commander must be very thorough in making his tactical plan. Once made, he must be utterly ruthless in carrying it out and forcing it through to success. In my view, I think Monty has described Dowding's generalship to a T. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below. Um, also, I've provided a couple of links to videos um, on a general outlook of the uh, Battle of Britain from the Imperial War Museum, from those of you who would like a, a broad perspective. Uh, I have no relationship with the museum. I just like their work. I think it's good. So thank you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.